Okay, it's time to start adding some detail to this character. We've locked in pretty much all the form, and we've worked on the face a little bit, getting the structure of it overall. But we really haven't done anything with the most important feature he has, which is that big, disfiguring scar. So it's time to do that. I'm going to start off just by doing a couple adjustments in ZBrush, just kind of to fix him up a little bit. And then we're going to start really adding in that, that detail. Um, and then bring him back into Max and, and uh, enhance that detail by actually cutting the edges instead of just pushing it around in ZBrush as we've done so far. So first thing I'm going to do is just kind of fix the bridge of the nose. It looked a little strange before. It was kind of pushing in a little too much. And then I want to adjust some of the nostril area where it got a little, uh, a little bit wide. So I'm just going to turn on the symmetry mode here and move that a little bit. It's looking a little better. And smooth out some of those areas, make sure everything is nice and smooth. And I'm always looking at the reference too. I have a dual monitor set up at work and at home, which I, I usually always use just to, um, just to keep my reference somewhere where I can keep looking at it. You can print stuff out, but there's something about having a nice digital copy, nice and bright, right above you or right to your left or right. Really seems to help, uh, helps me a lot. Go pick up a cheap little LCD monitor and hook it up to your computer. It really is uh, pretty helpful. Otherwise, just printing it out or having books or magazines as reference is good too. So I want to keep his eye pretty closed up. It looks like he had a pretty bad accident, whatever happened to him, where it blasted one side of his face pretty good, and he's got a couple chunks missing here and there on the other side. And so the first thing I'm going to do is just using the move tool, just kind of adjust the eye a bit. Um, I want to fix some of that eye fold there, and then just smoothing it out so I don't get too much of a bulbous look. Sometimes using the move tool, you'll get a, a little odd look. So just like we've done before, where we'll, we'll draw and then smooth and then draw and then smooth, we can do that with the move tool too to keep everything nice and smooth. Now it looks a little CG on the clothes right now, so I'm actually going to use the inflate tool, which I think is a great way to kind of add a little bit of a fleshy look. And then smooth that out too. This eye should be pretty fused together. In fact, we're probably going to use the bridge tool when we're in Max, which will make it look like little pieces of the, of the meat have fused together, which is kind of gross, but it should look pretty neat. And then we're just going to sketch in where his big main scar detail is. So this is just using simple ZBrush tools, uh, push, pull, some inflate, um, nothing too fancy at this point. We're just going to keep it, we're just sketching this in because we're really going to use this as reference. Um, and one, we're going to actually do most of the detailing in Max. We could just do everything here and retopologize it and have a nice mesh, but I want to kind of speed this up and get us to a point where we really get to see how Max's tools can be used to model too. So we're just going to cut in a couple of these details here. I'm going to fade ahead a little bit here. We've added a bunch of the scar detail to all over the character. We're just going to put a little bit below the mouth as well. And then uh, right here, I'm just drawing in the scar and then smoothing it and then drawing it in. And I also want to kind of keep that look, which I'll do more in Max, where you have the... Uh, when, when flesh gets scarred, you have kind of a, a crevice that happens sometimes, but you also sometimes will have an, um, the flesh kind of bulges out, kind of bubbles out a little bit. So I want to keep that going too. I mean, it's a little gross, but it looks pretty neat, especially for this kind of character. This scar should be kind of old, but I think when we do the textures, we might keep it looking a little bit fresher than it really is. Um, so, so we're gonna have a little creative licensing here. So I want to break the symmetry up even more if I can, without going too crazy. Just moving some points around. Moving some stuff, moving some stuff. Once we're happy with it, we're just going to go down to the lowest res and hit cage, which will push everything kind of into place, trying to figure out ex about how far we've gone with the uh, higher level stuff. So it'll kind of pull those, those bottom res verts out a little bit. When we're ready, we're just going to export this head back over to Max. Because what we're going to do now is actually cut in all this scar detail. This is just kind of a sketch for us to get an idea of where we're going. So it's exported. I also wanted to save the high res one to kind of look at as reference while we work. So there's our unscarred dashing hero, who will soon be a disfigured freak. But first, let's clean this file a little bit. We really don't need all these stuff from the last chapters where we had. Um, different versions of the pants showing the high-res, low-res stuff, so we're just going to get rid of that stuff. Keeping your, your work file as clean as possible is always a good idea. 
But it can be nice to have those other files to reference while you're still working on something. So wait till you're actually finished before you remove them. Okay, so we're moving in this head. This is the high res head. Just gonna move them off to the side. All right. So I've also merged in our low res head with the with the cage. Uh, button clicked, so it kind of pushed all the verts around a little bit to approximate what we did in ZBrush. But there really wasn't enough detail on this guy to hold up any of that. So just using the cut tool in Max, and keeping an eye on that other mesh, we want to make sure that we kind of follow the way it goes. We could use it as an underlaying mesh with transparency on, or however we want to do it, but I think right here I've got a pretty good idea of what we're doing. Kind of goes up across the eye and then comes back down. So I'm just going to cut in and, and break, break some of this up on where I want this nasty scar to go. Following what we did in ZBrush. Not to a letter, but just to a point where it's easy for us to, uh, to see what we want to do. So then that edge loop doesn't quite flow where I want it to go, but it's pretty close, really. So I can actually use that by just grabbing those, those certain edges and, and, and connecting them. So grabbing an edge ring, removing the part that goes way back in the head. Then grabbing both loops and using the extrude tool and then extruding inside of the head. And then using the relax tool to kind of soften that whole look. We've got a turbo smooth on top of this head so we can keep taking a look at what really is going on on the head. It's always a good idea to take a look with the smooth on and without really shows you what your actual model is doing. So I'm just converting that edge loop selection into uh, verts and then moving along the local axis. When you do it with edges, it keeps it all contained. But when you do it with verts, it moves each vert along the local axis, which is really nice for kind of bulging areas out and adding a little bit of flesh to those areas. It's important when you're doing uh, organic stuff to not have too much smooth areas. Especially if you want to keep away from that CG look. And especially on something like this where you've got a lot of scars and wrinkle detail and whatnot. So I'm going to turn on the snap tool here. I want to make sure we're hitting the edges and not having these floating verts, which will sometimes happen when you use the cut tool. And then just using that extrude tool again, we're going to get that basic scar look going. I don't want to relax it because that's going to be way too harsh and CG looking if we leave it as it is. We're going to have a lot of cleanup to do on this too. So I move one part of the, of the lip a little bit further out so it kind of overlaps the other piece. Now in the next disc, we're going to take him into ZBrush and enhance a lot of his detail and add more of the, the tinier little scars around. But this is, the, this is just for the big main pass, the, the big parts that when the light hits it and when he comes close to the camera, we really want to show that that detail is really on the face, and which will really kind of sell any of the smaller detail we add with maps. So then we still have this little piece of skull that kind of got ripped asunder over here. I'm going to cut along. I'm putting the snap tool back on to make sure, because I could already tell that some of those were floating in the middle of the edges. But just by having snap on it, it's a guaranteed way to make sure that we're not going to have any unexpected results later on. I'm going to grab these faces. I'm going to pull those in, those are edges first. Rough out the shape of how that scar should look. All right, we're already getting pretty close to how we want him to look. There's a lot more we can do, but this is showing a pretty good idea of where we're going to go with this character. So we're going to fade ahead a little bit now. Another way to do these scars, once we've done this extrude, is actually grab those faces and extrude and inset them. Excuse me. And then grow that and relax it again. It's a good way to make something look like it's kind of cut up pretty nicely.
you really want those the part where the corner of the scar is to to be relaxed a lot more because it sometimes on a shape like that it'll, it'll kind of pinch in on itself and then we got to clean up a few of these little stray verts that have appeared from the zbrush pass a lot of these overlapping areas could cause a lot of pro problems in the rigging for um, facial animation so we're going to want to clean those up as much as possible then moving ahead a little bit another area that we really haven't touched on is those little pouches he has um, I made those little boxes earlier, which were just kind of a template to show that he will have pouches eventually. But for something like this, it's really easy to just start with a plane. Almost all my props, I usually start with a plane. So we're going to put that down to 1 and 1, convert it to an edible poly, and then kind of think of it like a fabric piece where all these pieces should attach and just extrude these edges because we're going to use the shell modifier which should give us a pretty close look to how it'll actually end up looking so we're going to convert that to vertex and then make polygon off the vertexes or vertice and then putting the shell modifier on a little bit of thickness to it and a turbo smooth on top of that we'll start roughing out the form of this thing so we want to add some edge loops to uh, hold the form of it a little better Getting a little crazy in the middles. Then I'm just going to chamfer the edge on the bottom. Then I want this to be a little harsher too, a little sharper. i move that back where the piece folds over itself. You can really go pretty wild with any of these designs. I'm, I'm doing kind of simple uh, ideas of how these things look, but you could, using these techniques, make as detailed an object as you wanted. Here, I'm just going to make a very simple pouch. I want to pull that down a little bit. Close it up so it's a little tighter, too. You can see something like this. You could really easily start with a box as well. It's all preference, in my opinion. You can see we did that extrude to kind of keep everything um, a little sharper when we have the turbo smooth on, but it got a little sloppy in some areas. Now I don't want to keep having to do everything on one on both sides, so I'm just going to put the symmetry modifier on. All right. So it's time to clean this up a little bit. <laughs> An old method I used to use, which I still sometimes fall back on, is before we had nice slides and stuff in Max, I would um, just cut along edge rings a couple times and then remove the ones below it. And that would kind of keep everything as uh, smooth flowing as I wanted. And I occasionally will still do that just out of habit. Really could have just added an edge ring and uh, put on edge slide and moved it up. I want to make sure this thing looks closed. And then bring in that a little bit. Look a little too square right now. We're just going to inset that front part a little bit. And when you do that on an object with symmetry, you'll see that it keeps... Um, it keeps kind of an odd shape in the middle. So I'm just going to close that because we want this whole thing to slide all the way across uh, the object when it's got the symmetry on. We don't want it just to kind of sit there in the center. So you see if we just remove that, it messes up. So we'll just cut in there, remove that one, cut here, remove that edge, and then just remove that edge loop. And we pull it back in, it should keep it nice and smooth. Right, I'm going to fade a, a little bit ahead right now. So fading ahead a little bit, we can see that I've added a button to him. I've kind of bulged the form out a little bit to keep it away from that boxy look. And I added kind of a strap that goes all the way across him and then kind of comes up so I can attach it to the belt later on. All this was done just as before where we took a, a face and just extruded edges. 
So now we want to take a look at the overall where we're at on him and make sure that we're actually keeping up with everything we did for Hong's design. We've kind of looked at him from uh, the head angle, but we haven't really looked at the body too much. So I'm just going to take this, and just like we used for the image planes for the head, I'm going to take the body now, front and side. So scaling this plane, and if you remember from before, all we did was make a plane the same dimensions as the, as the Photoshop file that we saved, or the JPEG actually that we saved. Then we're just going to scale it into place. Now my placement of my arms and my legs are different because I made mine for how uh, our riggers prefer them, which is kind of a little bit of a uh, distance between the legs and the arms outstretched a little bit more. Still relaxed, but just not quite so much at the side. And then I'm just going to put everything in ghost mode so I can see through him. We'll see how everything holds up. I want to make sure the crotch and the shoulders and the head and the feet placement are all about the same distance. Um, now his feet have a little bit of an angle to them, so I'm going to have to kind of eyeball it and guess what I think looks right. Now we're going to get the side view and see how it looks. So we're just duplicating that plane, duplicating that material, calling it side, and then adding the side reference image. And we can see we're pretty close. We've basically got everything in the right positions. Everything kind of matches up pretty good. But not quite perfect. His legs are a little awkward, and we need to fix that right now. I'm going to grab all these objects except for the planes. We're going to put an FFD on top of everything. And I want to make sure the Turbo Smooth is off in viewport. Otherwise, it takes a little too long to move stuff around with these FFDs. And we've got so many objects selected that it's just more trouble than it's worth. And I did a, um, a free one in box mode so that I wouldn't have to uh, be set just to four. Because I want to make sure that when I move the legs, I'm not also moving the arms and other areas that don't need to move. So let's set it to about 7, 7, and 9. There's no real set method for how many you want to cut it up by. Just whatever still moves around on the screen pretty quick and make sure you don't move parts you don't want to move. We could also break these apart into different uh, FFDs so they're not all instanced on every piece of object, but it'll be okay for now because I want to move the jacket and the legs in the same time. Then we've got to make sure the feet are a little bit better positioned. I'm going to unhide. See, my naming convention isn't too good right now. We'll have to fix that up pretty soon. For now, I'm just going to move these legs up a little bit. And move these legs in a little bit and the crotch down a little bit. I'm just looking a little high there. I want to pull that out a little too. His hips were getting a little bit narrow. Even though we have these pouches on there, his hips were still looking a little strange. So they're a bit wide right now, actually, but... We'll just, uh... We'll live with it for now. We'll keep adjusting this stuff as we go. So I'm just going to quickly cap the bottom of the foot. It's bothering me that there was nothing there. And then connect all these edges together. Now, we did this right. We should have a pretty clean um, divisions cut across. I'm trying to make sure that everything is uh, even on both sides, so we'll see how well I did. wasn't really going at this with an exact science. I, I like to model kind of uh, a little more by eye, so sometimes it bites me in the butt. But it seems like we did okay on this, so. I'm gonna cut that in the middle, connect that. And then, connect these guys. And, connect those. As you can see, we still have one kind of floating. But the back of his shoe looks like it could actually use that extra ring anyway to hold some of the form. So I'm going to add that all the way across. I need to adjust some of this because some of the shoe is interpenetrating into itself and we can't have that. So we'll just fix that up real quick. So a lot of this level is just kind of detailing these areas. We, we've, we started by roughing everything in. Then we added more detail. And then we, we took a lot of stuff into ZBrush and, and painted in a lot of the detail and, and then retopologized. But at this stage, we're adding detail to the lesser objects and looking at even the objects that we've done a lot of work on and making sure that they all hold up at about the same level. So one thing that these boots were missing was, um, was some little ringlets for the laces. 
that can be really easily made by just making a cylinder and then adding a bridge between the two um, faces on there and that just makes a quick little donut shape there's other ways to make them too but I'm setting my ways and that's the way I seem to make them so there we go I don't want to bulge it out so just by grabbing that edge ring and using it in local mode and then scaling Just make sure it's about, see, it feels like the right size. And then we just start duplicating and cloning the elements so that we don't have a million little objects to deal with. And we're going to have to do this quite a bit, so I'm going to fade ahead a little bit. So now we've got most of them all placed where we want them. But we want to make sure that both boots show it too. So. We're going to affect the pivot here. Right now, the pivot's in the center of these objects, and that's not where we want it. We want it to actually be in the center of the world. So I just snap it down to, um, to grid. Turn off effect pivot. And then I'm going to copy all of the settings from the boots, because I want to make sure when I toggle things on and off that it all works together. So there's one half of that done. Now we have a bit more editing to do here. A lot more we have to do with this character before we're really happy with him. And one of those parts is going to be taking all of these into ZBrush. Because we can keep adding FFDs to this character and move stuff around, but it comes to a point where it's just a little bit faster to use it in ZBrush. ZBrush handles millions of polygons so well that we can really quickly just bring all these objects into ZBrush and move positions around. And then using morph targets, make sure that we hold all the information we had on the other objects. So I'm just going to adjust some stuff. I want to break the symmetry on the jacket a little bit more. And some of this stuff on the collar, I'm not really thrilled with, but we're going to work on that a lot more later on too. So for right now, it's just fine. We can move, just want to block in a little bit more of the form that we have here. Turning on symmetry on some parts and turning it off on others. Just We want to break the symmetry in some areas, but we also want to make sure that he holds up pretty well. Now, you might notice that I'm moving the jacket around and not moving the, the body, too. What I did there was by going to auto groups, it'll actually group every object that's uh, not connected. And then I just masked off the areas um, by hiding the jacket. And when I unhid, the, I unhid all the objects, I was able to just move stuff on the jacket instead of the entire object. So everything else that's kind of dark gray right now is locked off. So we're just adjusting any areas we see penetrations on. It's quite a few right now. I'm going to look at the whole guy now. Still not really happy with the way the crotch is looking there. I'm going to try and break that up a little. Now that we've done those edits, let's bring him back into uh, Max. Nothing too major you might have noticed, but it was all enough that it saved us a lot of time by doing it in ZBrush. Now that we have our nice clown colored object, we're going to put a morpher on these above the symmetry because the vert ID would be different if it was below it. And then collapsing them. And before we export it over to ZBrush, we made sure that we turned off the shell and a turbo smooth because those are uh, modifiers we want to make sure are still able to put on the top. So we're just going to pick every object and dial in as much as we want. What's nice about this solution too is that if we did too much in ZBrush we can always take it back down. We can toggle between the two and see, make sure that what we did actually worked pretty well. We could, um, if you didn't have access to ZBrush you could just do an edit and poly modifier on top and move the points around yourself that way too. So we're going to fade ahead a little while too. Right now we're going to work on making the bandage that we drew on the character earlier. The easiest way to do this is to pick the arm object. And then using poly topo we can actually just draw in the whole bandage. Now my video card is a weird display thing where I have um, kind of a ghosting effect happen when I have uh, see through mode turned on an object, so I'm not sure if that's something that happens on all computers or if it's just mine. It might look a little funky. 
right, those areas might not keep connected too. So once we get the basic form in, I'm just going to use the border tool and hold shift and just kind of draw along and get this bandage kind of roughed in. I want it to look kind of sloppy because it's like something that he just wrapped around his arm real quick. But you could use this method to make really tight bandaging. Sometimes the border tool wants to grab an area that you're not wanting to work, so you have to move the camera around a little. So moving ahead a little bit, we'll take a... We'll do some quick detailing onto this. I want to have a little bit of the strap hanging off of this bandage. So just duplicating this down. See, we put a shell modifier on there as well, just like we've done with the clothing. You can tell it's something I like to do on all my props. It helps me kind of see where things are going without having to actually extrude along the normals and then realize I did something wrong and have to move stuff around. Anything I can do to have the least geometry to edit is always the best. Just like making the laces out of uh, renderable splines, and later on we'll, we're going to convert those into uh, polygons as well. So let's take a look at what we did. Doing a quick render here. We should get a pretty good idea of where we're at on the character. We've pretty much got everything in place except for really duplicating that pouch that we added and putting it uh, on the arms, or excuse me, on the uh, rest of the legs and around the back and whatnot. And we still have to build a holster too. Um, by comparing the concept to where we're at right now, we've done quite a bit. Really close to having almost all the pieces put in place. Still a lot of, of the finer little details to add, though. So I want to adjust his collar. I don't like the way it's looking right now. Just quickly moving some points around. And also making sure there's none of these penetrations happening. You can see I'm scaling on one and then moving some stuff, too. Scaling to kind of keep that point down a little bit. It was getting a little... A little uh, I don't know, flamboyant. Now another thing his jacket has that we added was that little pocket. And the quick way to do that would just be to have it float on top of the jacket. Um, so one way we could do is actually just to pick the jacket as a surface. And using the poly topo tool once again, we'll just draw the shape of the pocket on there. No, we could just have it float on top of space, but I, I want to make sure that this actually um, is part of the jacket. So once we build it, we're going to merge it all together. The big thing with that is a lot of people will, will make the pockets on, on clothing be uh, floating geometry, but sometimes when the character starts to be animated, say it's like the back pocket on jeans or, or something like this on a jacket, and he moves in a really um, extreme way, it kind of starts to float and look really strange. So we definitely want to keep away from that. Always keep in mind when you're modeling how stuff might animate. And uh, it'll save you a lot of headaches later on in the future when you have to fix stuff. Nothing worse than that. So we're just going to delete that top piece. Grab these edges. And make a little flap on the top of it. Just holding shift and dragging it down. And then scaling it in a little ways. See, we've got the rough form of a pocket in place already. Once again, I want to use the shell tool, but and I'm going to use the jacket's turbo smooth, so I'm just going to paste from instance. You can see it doesn't quite look right, so we're just going to move some of these verts around. So fading ahead a little bit, we can see what we've done. And we'll give it a quick render to see how the overall jacket looks. Looks okay. Now it's time to add a little bit more detail to those pouches because pretty soon we're going to want to duplicate these things all the way around the body. First thing I want to do is break apart some of that boxy look they have. So soft selection comes in really handy in this point. And also make it look like there's something on the inside of these things. If he's going to be carrying around all these pouches. There better be something inside. Maybe um, important documents or field mice, I, I don't know, whatever this guy might carry. 
So we've got the basic pouch laid out right here. I think it's about time we could start duplicating it around. And we're going to have to still add a lot more detail. So at this point, we could probably keep it as an instance pouch, or we could just kind of deal with it and start duplicating it around. But first, let's add a little bit more detail now. So what I'm going to do is add some, um, some kind of stitching to this, uh, to the strap that goes around it. I did that just by inserting an edge loop, then grabbing it and uh, running a chamfer on it, and then grabbing that edge ring all the way around it, and then moving it on the local um, edge by edge, which kind of bulges it all out. Now I want to fix all this so that it's um, not being penetrated by that. We're going to fade ahead a little bit, I think. So fading ahead a little bit here. One thing he has is these pouches strapped to his leg. And so what we want to do is grab that, that area where we can have some tension where the strap might be pulling against the leg a little bit. So we've got that. We're gonna, now we're just going to use the cut tool. Just really quickly kind of cut in how this goes. I'm going to use a quick slice actually since it's going to have to be pretty straight all the way across. So I'm going to take two cuts all the way across. And you can see that really messes the geometry up pretty nasty. So we have some cleanup to do. So I'm going to hide everything that we're not needing right now just by using the under edit edges, uh, the hide selected uh, faces. Now it's time to start cleaning this up. This takes a little doing. You really got to kind of see in your head how you want the edge flow to go, even though we spent all that time before on this. The easiest thing to do here is just kind of pull all this in and split it right in the middle now. And I'm just going to delete any of these faces that are kind of floating there. And then just kind of cut along. This is something, there's no real quick way to do. It's just, um, you get used to it and it doesn't take too long. But just keep in mind that you want your topology to be very clean and, and still flow really smoothly. I want to bulge up that top part a little bit. And if you have these little triangle groups, you can just collapse them. Because later on, we'll start moving and using the spin edge and, and also just redrawing the edges to, uh, to reshape the topology here. You can see it looks a little strange right now. But with a little bit of work, we really get it to look pretty clean. And I'm actually just going to grab all the faces that we did on the inside and, and duplicate them to their own object. And then here, add a shell modifier, because we're going to start making the strap that, the, that is uh, used around the leg right now. And it's really pretty easy to do that. I'm going to grab that center edge loop. And like we made the belt earlier, we kind of ran a chamfer on it, which kept the, um, the top and bottom at a pretty smooth and even rate all the way across. But first I got to make sure this is as clean as can be, because otherwise it's not going to be nice and even all the way across. So we did just a little clean up, and we moved that to about the size we want it. Convert that to face. And then I'm just going to change the smoothing group on those and then select by smoothing group and delete. Just one way you could select the other offending polys you wanted to kill. Add the shell modifier to this as well. You can see we still have to fix up areas where there's um, a few faces that got wacky. And we do that just by grabbing an edge and deleting edge loop. And then moving some of these points out a little bit. And moving along the locals to uh, have it on edge constraint. Okay, moving along the locals to kind of bulge it out a little ways. I kind of realized that some of this area wasn't looking quite, quite as good as it should. So, so one thing I want to do on this jacket is kind of um, add a little bit more of a pillowy effect on his uh, on his collar area. So I'm going to grab these on both sides. Oh. Got to be careful with Max's selection. Sometimes even though it's um, you can't see it, you'll still be selecting the object. And using ignore back face is a good way to uh, make sure that you don't select the wrong polygons. But even then, sometimes it still messes up, so you got to be keeping heads up the whole time. And then select all those. 
once we have that, let's go down to the inset tool, bring it in a little ways, a couple times, and then push it oh, back on the edge constraint, there we go, push it out a little ways, it kind of adds a little bit of a um, seam around it. So if we take a look at this, want a little bit more in that area, so this is what I'm going to do is just I'm going to insert a couple more edge loops in here, and then grab those edge rings all the way around it and, and bring them out a little ways, and then sharpen some edges too. There we go. That looks a little nicer. Adjust the shell amount. You can see some of these areas are kind of penetrating into themselves, so turning on soft select to make sure that edge distance is on, we can move these points around. And then make sure that this belt that we made earlier is going to fit in here. I'd like to make sure that both of these are using the same um, the same turbo smooth and shell. So, because we're going to be merging these things together, we got to delete uh, and excuse me, we have to attach the two objects together. And then I'm going to delete all the faces that are underneath the pocket because we're going to totally rebuild the topology under that. We don't want to delete too much though. The less work we have to do, the better. Okay, so I've deleted that. And then I'm just going to hide the areas I don't want to see right now. Turn on the screen mode so I can kind of tweak these verts out of the way and see what we really have to work with here. I'm going to use that border tool again and just start closing off some of these areas. And we have to add a couple more edge, lo uh, edge loops in here, which will come in handy because we're going to add some wrinkles in this area a little bit later. So there are a couple triangles that we'll, we should be able to clean up later on. And then I'll weld a few of these too. We don't want to just keep making faces if we don't have to. So when you're adding all of these things, you still want to be thinking of the topology and, and what you're actually going to have to do later on. So target weld comes in handy in these areas. We've almost got enough. We have this one couple floating verts here, so we gotta got to fix that up. See where this goes. I'm just gonna add another edge edge loop all the way across. We might clean it up a little bit later because it's kind of a weird area right now. But for now, we're getting everything connected pretty good. I'm keeping it all in quads. I don't want to have a little area of uh, deformation here too, so this will this will work good. folds have been added. The pocket is now part of it. We could paste instance back the, uh, the modifiers that we cut before and then add a little bit more shape to this thing. It's a little bit square. This old leather jacket should have a little bit more, um, more character to it. And then maybe a seam on this too. When we have the textures, a lot of this will be hard to see, but it'll, uh, I think it'll kind of pop it out a little bit better. So now that we've done a little bit of work on that pocket, there's still some area on the head we've, we kind of left um, hanging a little while ago. One thing is he doesn't really have much room for all the detail we've added that when he makes uh, many expressions with his forehead, he doesn't have very much um, wrinkle area. So I'm going to start drawing that in, and I'm just using the connect tool here. So we want to keep it pretty even so that we make some surprise expressions or certain types of anger that he can really kind of furrow his brow and um, have some of, some of that wrinkle. And here we're just going to pull some of this in a little bit and then break it off so it's not so symmetrical. Looks okay. And 
then using the cut tool in Max. Yeah, I think you still need a little bit more um, scar detail in that eye. Even though we're going to do a lot with maps too. So what I did there was I used the cut on, um, on the one part I could see, but this part that gets overlapped, I just did an extrude on that edge ring. Excuse me, a chamfer on that edge ring. And then connected the verts. So we chamfer it. And then... I just got to clean this up a little bit better. All right, that looks better now. But this seems to add a little bit too much detail to the mesh, so I just use that build edges, uh, excuse me, build end under the modeling tools of uh, Polyboost, which adds a nice kind of hook area and kind of cleans up that without, without adding too much more detail that we're going to need. As you can see, I'm already adding a third uh, edge loop in there. Then the, uh, the mouth needs a little bit more work too. I want to have a little bit more, I guess that would be the kind of uh, clefty area under the under the lip. I want his chin to be a little bit more defined too. That should be pretty simple. Just pull these little verts here and there. Then in here, you can see one area we skipped through a little bit, but I added a kind of a, a fused area on the eye and just some more wrinkle detail here and there. All of this is really simply done using Max and Poly, Poly Boost, using a lot of the same tools we've already used. Open the mouth a little bit too, because I want some of that teeth later on to be exposed. So, But since it's a kind of a repeat of things we've been doing, just uh, working on different areas, I didn't want to show too much of that at this point. I think you've gotten the idea of how that some of that works. Now here, we're, we're cleaning up some of the eye area. Um, by doing a lot of stuff in ZBrush, we kind of had a lot of overlap area. And that's not good for when we start doing facial systems on this character. And now I also want to keep up a nice clean mesh, even though we've uh, added all this scar detail. It's not an excuse to have um, a messy mesh, even though some areas are going to get a little sloppy to begin with. So we'll, uh, we've will we got to clean, keep this thing as clean as possible as we go. It'll make UVing him easier. It'll make animating him easier. It just makes everything a lot easier in the long run. So we're pretty much getting toward the end of this chapter, but what we have left to do is uh, just a little bit more detailing. Starting off, I wanted to go into this, um, this pouch and clean up a few areas that were just looking a little shoddy. Need some wrinkles. Um, that big strap around it was just a little bit too large. I just want to break it up a little bit more, make it a little bit less symmetrical. And also add some more cuts and wrinkles and whatnot. It's really a fun part of the process when you start destroying some of the little geometry that you've already made. Adding the wrinkles and cuts and um, scarring it or tattering it or whatever. And that's really what we're going to be doing from, from the rest of this chapter. Just enhancing some of these details that we've added. And then adding a little bit more here and there wherever we can. Just kind of breaking up the symmetry here. And adding some cuts, adding some wrinkle to this. Should have kind of a um, little bit of tension from where that strap kind of wraps around it. So just using the cut tool once again. You can see though we use a lot of the Polyboost tools that the Max tools do work really well as well. Um, I'm trying to use a little bit of both so you can see that even if you don't have a full version of Polyboost, that you can still use all the Max tools and do just the exact same things. Just maybe not quite as streamlined. So I hid the areas we don't want to see right now. And I'm just going to cut along here. And then clean up this geometry where it gets sloppy. You can see that can go really quick. So I clean up this. Convert to vertex and use the build end tool. And then the build end tool again. One of my favorite tools in Polyboost. It really does clean things up really fast. And then just keep this kind of going here. We'll fade ahead a little bit. We've added some wrinkling. Now we're just kind of folding up some of the uh, the flap area. Make sure that it's not quite so normal looking. I 
I think it's unbelievable. It's all about kind of breaking up the symmetry, making it look a little bit more natural. Even though we're doing a stylized character, a slightly stylized comic book kind of character, still want to break that up a little bit. And then um, you may have noticed earlier that I had a bit of a belt that we haven't really gone over the creation of. Um, I cut that out just because this is the real belt. The other one I had was more of a temp kind of placeholder. So just like we did on other things, we um, want to make sure this all lines up pretty nicely. And then we're going to build the buckle for this thing. The buckle for it is going to be pretty simple, really. Uh, just kind of a little two-loop kind of idea. I'm going to make it just by duplicating a polygon, basically. Taking it down here, and then flattening it out. I want to make sure this thing is its going to be a piece of metal, so it should be pretty straight. So I could also do this by starting a new plane, and just like we've done on other objects. But for here, I think this will work just fine. And I'm going to use the symmetry also, so we'll break it apart in a moment. Detach it. And here we go. I'm going to actually do a couple symmetries on this because what we're going to do first, I want to bring this up so I can move it. I'm going to bring this over here to make kind of a U shape. Copy it. Paste it. And I want to do this on, I believe, Z. There we go. And it kind of makes like a, a zero or a circle or an O. Which is just what we want. Move, clean this up a little bit. And then move some of this stuff over. Actually, I was going to just extrude it, but I think what I'll do instead is um, just put the shell modifier on it. I'm duplicating this over to the other side. And then earlier I mentioned how we did the, um, the cut on the eye. And I mentioned that we used the bridge tool. So we're going to use it right here just by grabbing a face on each um, opposite side of this. And then clicking the bridge, it builds a little bridge between the two uh, faces. And this can be on, um, you can make punch holes in objects with this. You can um, weld two objects together with this. It's a really great tool. So then I want to sharpen this up a whole bunch. Let's see how it looks with a smooth on it. It's pretty good. It's a little weird looking though. I'm just going to move this. Whoop. Make sure we grab all the right verts, move it down, and then I want to straighten it out just a little bit. It's getting a little curvy and weird looking. But it's going to be so small on the character, I don't, I don't want to spend too much time on it. I think that's going to be okay. So we'll just get this thing into place, and then we're going to wrap the belt around it. Rotate it, and it's looking pretty good now. I want to pull it out a little bit, make it a little bit thicker so it stands out better. So we're just extruding edges right around this thing. Just think of it like a real belt loop would go. And then we want to add some detail to this belt. I'm going to do that just by adding a couple edge loops. Do that a few times. And then where I think the ribbing should be on the edges, I'm just going to grab those edge rings and extrude the faces along the local normal. This is kind of doing the same thing as the shell modifier would do. Um, but when you have the shell as well on top of it, it makes kind of a nice, um, a nice seam in the, in the object. If I want to keep this pretty sharp, I just grab those edges, chamfer them, and I turned that down a little bit. It was getting a little bulbous. So there we go. we got a basic belt built. over a little ways. As you can see it's not exactly an exact science at this point, but it's looking pretty decent. Move 
move that in and out. And then just anything we can do to kind of keep the form. Now we're just going to jump over it and work on the bandage area. Right now it was flat and this, we're going to use in the next DVD, we we'll are use um, alpha mass to make this thing transparent. But for the big cuts, I like to actually cut them into the geometry. Always looks a little bit better and works better with casting shadows and reflections and everything. So here we go. We still, even though we're doing some destruction of the geometry, we still want to keep it as clean as we can. Got it all in quads right there. And then um, this pretty much the last thing we're going to want to do, actually there's one more piece after this, but we want to enhance some of the scar detail that we added. And ZBrush is a great way to do that. So we brought it in this head object, actually the whole character, um, and just divided it a few times up to about three. Now I'm just going to enhance some of this detail that we've carved in already. Add more crevice or, you know, bring some areas out or just kind of roughen it up overall. Since we use some pretty basic tools to cut this in, ZBrush is a great tool to add a little bit more of an organic flair to it. And a lot of this is going to be done with textures later on, so it's easy to kind of get a little uh, too into it at this stage. But it really, we just want to enhance the detail that we've already cut in. And then, since his arm is exposed, we want to make sure that it's got some definition to it. So we might sculpt in some more detail on the arm as well. I'm just going to start painting in some of these details now. Just going along the bicep, going along the forearm, just bringing out any of that muscle that's kind of gotten a little soft, softened as we've gone back and forth. And the hands have a little bit of a weird look. We're going to make gloves later on, so I don't want to spend too much time, but we want to make sure that their overall form works pretty well. It's just kind of softening those areas. The knuckles bringing them out a little bit. It got a little sharp in some areas and a little bit narrow in others. I'm just kind of looking at them overall. My pivot got off, so I wanted to uh, make sure my pivot's in the right place. Softening some of these muscles too. We're gonna just keep. I'm gonna add another division to it too, just to make sure it's easy to paint on. Enhance the tricep a little bit. Even though none of this is really going to be shown, um, we just still want to work on it just to uh, keep the overall feel good. And in case later on, if we have to take the jacket off or whatever, it's good to have this, some of this muscle detail in there. But because so little is seen, we're not going to redo the topology on the arm. If we did a lot of muscle detail, we might want to do that, but going for kind of a soft muscle look. So we don't need to really make sure he looks like a uh, comic book superhero type, more a pulp hero. A little more realistic in the anatomy on the muscle detail, at least. Not to say he doesn't have some crazy muscles going on. So we just keep adding some more detail here and there. And doing what we can to keep away from that ZBrush bulbish look. Bringing a lot, out a little bit of the bone structure, too. Good to do this before we make the gloves because otherwise we have to remake them a couple times. Just bringing out all that detail. And this is looking pretty good, so I think we're about ready to move on to the last little detailing piece, which is kind of adding some um, some more detail to the boots and whatnot, but I think uh, on this stage we're pretty much ready to move on. So now that we've done all that body detailing, we notice our jacket and all of our clothes don't really fit anymore. 
So we're just going to move a few points around to make sure everything still um, doesn't overlap or penetrate into the body. So we just use soft selections and kind of pull some of these areas out. And you can spend a lot of time doing that, so I'm just going to fade ahead to the next bit of detailing, and actually the last bit of detailing we're going to do on this chapter, which is um, enhancing some of the little boot de details, um, mainly in the laces. One of the last things I want to do on this is add a, um, a knot on, onto the boot. And you can do this in poly modeling really easy too, but using these splines is quite simple to do. Just um, you know, drag this into place, then using the, the divide tool, you can just grab an edge um, along the spline, click divide as many times you want, or just set the number of divisions you'd like, and then you can move each little vert into place. And I don't have to worry about um, having an ununiform feel for the, uh, the lace. It'll make sure everything keeps a very uh, organized feel to it, which is, which is a nice quick way to make one of these knots and have a little bit of a, something that most people, I think, would kind of ignore on, a, on something. But you'd also have to make sure that you don't make these too big because when he starts running around, these areas will have to be cloth deformed. So it's just something to keep in mind. Now if it's a key part of the character, maybe they want them to flop around a little bit. It might look kind of neat, but if it's something you're never going to see, it might just be a waste of detail you're adding, and you just want to keep it nice and tight. So just move these points around, and then we um, have to just drag it a little further than we really need it, and then divide it a couple times, then start looping it back in on itself. So all that's left now is to kind of add a little bit of a dangle to the lace. So we'll pull this down a little bit, divide it a few times, and then just duplicate it over to the other side and make sure it doesn't intersect with itself. And we've got our boot laces all in place. So really it kind of covers this chapter. We're going to take a quick look at what we've done. You can see we've added a lot more detail to the character, and uh, we have a lot more to do too, so let's get moving on.